Demonstration Nugget App Engine Basics for Java. In this nugget, we're going to get familiar with the Achieved It sample application we're going to be building together throughout this course. So we'll head over to our development environment. We'll get it up and running inside of Eclipse. I'll give you a tour of both the structure of the application as well as the application itself. And then we'll just take a look at how to work with it both locally using the Google plugin as well as the SDK command line tools. And then we'll deploy it to the cloud and take a look at it up there in the developer's console. Let's head over to our dev box and get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is fire up Eclipse and get our project imported. So if we look here at this Nuggets directory 05-basics underscore Java, we have the Achieved It project in here ready to go. So let's go ahead and fire up Eclipse and we'll get this project imported uh, into Eclipse here to work with. So we're just going to go ahead and choose the workspace as that directory where the project lives. With Eclipse fired up and ready to go, let's import the project into our workspace here. So let's go to File, choose Import, and we're going to browse through General right into existing projects into the workspace where we'll browse to the root directory here, which is going to be 05basics underscore Java. So we'll hit Open. There's our project. Let's go ahead and hit Finish, and that's going to bring it right in to Eclipse and ready to go. Now, if you get any errors that pop up down here, uh, most likely they're due to a different App Engine SDK than I've got associated with my project here. So what you can do is just right-click, head down to Properties of the Project, and then go into your Java Build Path, head into Libraries there, and add the library, Google App Engine. That'll take you through this screen here where you can configure your SDKs, add them in here, and that will be good. That should fix any errors that you have. And that will get us to the point where we're at right here, where we have the project ready to go. Now let's get familiar with the structure of the application. I'll give you a tour here as well. So first thing I want to mention is this is just a very simple single module application currently. Everything's going to run under the default module. Once you get into modules and optimizations, we'll see how to break this out to support multiple modules. Now we've got this source directory here, which contains a package that contains all of our servlets. Don't need to have code in them right now. We'll be coding these up as we go throughout the App Engine course, but we're going to do things like wrap all of our data store calls inside of a data store utils. We've got other servlets here to handle the gets and the posts from the front end. So this is going to contain most of our server side code here inside of our servlets. If we head down to the war directory, we're going to have things like static content. So we have a CSS directory here, which contain our style sheets. We have an image directory, which contain our image. And then uh, we have our web inf, which is going to contain our configuration files, app engine, web.xml, and web.xml. We'll see how to code and configure these up uh, once we get into our configuration and management nuggets. And that's where we're going to spend a lot of time configuring how to point our application to our GCP project, and also how to do versioning and how to map requests to our code. All right, so that's webinf, and then we have all of our front-end files in here, our JSPs and our HTML files. Now, let's take a tour of the application so I can show you what all these pages do and to get you familiar with what we're going to be building here throughout this course. So let's click on the top level here. Let's drop down the Run button, and we're going to run this as a web application here, a Google App Engine web application. So this is going to fire it up locally. Once it's done, we'll have the web server up and running, hosting our site. So we're just going to copy this URL, fire up a browser, and paste it right in here. All right, so we're on the home page, and this is how this works. We've got a header up here, right? This is the header right here that's going to contain our logo, our title, and it's also going to contain our navigation system. So this header is actually uh, just one file, but we're going to include it on every single page. That way we only, we only need to manage our header source in one spot. This right here is the body, and this is the, really the home page right there. And then at the bottom of every page, we also have ourselves a footer. So here's the footer down here, and that's also going to be included on every single page. And just to show you what that looks like from a structural standpoint, here's our header right here. And right now I do have some code in here. We're going to go through all this. Uh, the security actually works, so we could log in with our Google account right now. Uh, just wanted to throw that in there to give you a quick demo. But we're definitely going to walk through this in our authorization, uh, authentication and authorization nugget to see how this stuff works and how to code it up. But our header is just that. It just simply contains the header which is going to contain our logo and our title, and it's going to contain our navigation system. And then our footer is the same way. It's just going to contain our footer that contains some, some links down there, the copyright, and then all of our social media links. And if we look at all of our other pages in here, such as the home page, you'll see the first thing we do is include the header. So that'll grab all that code from the header there, and at the very bottom, we include the footer. So that's going to be uh, consistent there with all of our pages. Let's head back to the browser and take a tour of Achieved It. So the home page is going to consist of just simply a little welcome message there, uh, as well as popular achievements. So this is going to be data store driven here. We're going to need a data store query that goes into the data store and pulls, uh, runs a query to get the five most popular achievements and puts them here on the page. 
We're also going to have a statistics area here. So we'll have an entity that maintains aggregates of, uh, of all the stats here inside of the data store. So this will require another data store query. And then we've got some leaderboards, a couple of more data store queries. So the home page is really going to be driven by querying the data store to shape uh, all the data that's going to be filled in here. Our achievements page, if we click on this link here, is going to take us to a little search engine on top of achievements. So anybody can come in here, put in some parameters, hit the search button, and that will give them the list of achievements down here that they will uh, have the ability then to either favorite or mark that they achieved it, which will add it into their portfolio of achievements. So just a nice little search engine on top of our achievement entity that will sit inside of the data store that will contain all of the achievements uh, here for our site. So here we'll see how to write some dynamic queries against the data store. Pretty cool. Also, if we head over to the Achievers link, this is how we're going to be able to search for people to follow. So same kind of deal here. We have a nice little search engine on top to search and find Achievers, where we'll be able to follow them, see how many people are following them, and just uh, look at all the, the users of the system, essentially. The last thing we can do over here is log in. And notice, we could search achievements and achievers and do all this stuff without actually being logged in. This is where we're going to need to wrap security around this because we only want logged in users to be able to do this kind of thing. We don't want a, a guest in the system having the ability to follow people because we don't know who they are and we won't be able to follow them. So we're going to wrap security around all of this. But I did just put the basics in here because if we click on login right now, it's going to simulate logging in with your Google account to Google's real system. But again, since we're running this locally, it's just going to give this this little simulation here that will allow us to log in with any email address and also log in as, admin, as an administrator. Because right now, if we log in as a regular user, now we're logged in, it's going to say welcome and then the username. We'll see how to get that in there. We'll be able to see our profile. But if we're logged in as an administrator, we're going to be able to get into administrative settings to do things like validate achievements. But if we look at our profile here, here's what it looks like. And this is where we're going to be able to fill out our profile. So we'll be able to define a username, our email address for notifications, a bio, and we'll also be able to see who we're following. And over on the right-hand side, we're going to be able to add new achievements. So this is how we're going to get data into the data store. Anybody's going to be able to come in their profile, add an achievement, specify a category, a description, and a score, and hit add. You'll also be able to see your achievements that you've marked as achieved it down here in your profile. Now let's log out as a regular user and log in as an administrator, just so I can show you this last page here. When you're logged in as an administrator, you'll get this admin link here. If we click on that, it'll take us to the approval page. So this is where an administrator will be able to make achievements that anybody has made live. So this is what will give us, again, an opportunity here to show you how poll queues work. Because anytime someone makes an achievement, it'll go into a poll queue here for an administrator to come in here and either approve or reject that achievement. Approve means it'll go live. Reject means it will not. And, uh, and the other part I want to mention here, if we go back to the profile, is anybody that you're following, you will be automatically registered to get email notifications whenever they have an achievement approved. And it goes live here in the system. So that'll give us an opportunity to show you how push queues work. And then on the home page, we'll see how scheduled tasks work because in order to aggregate all the data sitting in the data store, uh, we'll need to set up a, a scheduled task to run through and, and do all that aggregation. This is also going to give us a great opportunity to show you how memcache works because we're going to cache these data store results and serve them from the cache. That way we're not constantly hitting the data store anytime someone hits our home page, which will uh, equate to lower costs and improved performance of our homepage. So this app is chock full of all the core components inside of App Engine that we're going to be working with. Security, the data store, memcache, and task queues. So we'll be coding up all of our pages inside of this project as well as the servlets. Right now it's all just static HTML for the most part. Now if you want to stop the local development web server here in Eclipse, just hit the stop button and that'll spin it right down. Now another thing I want to show you how to do here is work with the SDK to spin up a local development web server outside of Eclipse. So again, some of these SDK tools uh, have support for things that we're going to need to do outside of our development environment. So that's why I want to get you familiar with these. And also tools like Apache Maven and Apache Ant sit on top of the SDK. So what we're going to do here is spin up Terminal. And we're just going to switch directories to where we planted the SDK, which is right inside of Applications here. And just to show you that, if we head to Applications, there is the SDK that we downloaded in a previous nugget. So let's go ahead and switch directories right to there. Just like so. Now our tools live inside of the bin directory. There they are. So there's app config, which is going to allow us to manage our application, download logs, do some things like that, update our application, uh, upload it to the cloud. And then the dev app server is going to allow us to spin up a local development web server. Now before you even try to run any of these tools, just because you may get a command not found, it's a good idea to make sure that you switch permissions. So do a chmod755 to give rewrite permissions against the bin directory. 
now we're good to go. So let's use the dev app server script here to spin up a local development web server. So dev app server .sh, and all you need to do here is pass in the path to the war directory of your application. So users, trainer, nugget lab, GAE, and this is 05 basics underscore Java. Here is our achieved it application, and there is the war directory. So we'll hit enter here, and that's it. It's going to spin it up. And the last line we should see is dev app server is now running. Same thing we get in the development environment there, only it's running it on port 8080 instead of 8888. So we can go ahead and copy this, and now we should get the same results. This should be running here on port 8080. And there it is. And that's about all there is to it. Now, if we wanted to upload our application to the cloud, we could, again, we could do this through Eclipse here by using the Google plugin. We could just hit deploy to App Engine. The only thing we need to make sure that we have configured here is our App Engine Web.xml. We would need to make sure here that we're pointing to our GCP project, which we are. We have our version set up here. More on that when we get into configuring and managing our application. But we could just simply do this through the UI here. Very easy to do. Just hit deploy. Or you could also do it through the command line using app config.sh. And just to show you here how to do that, let's just go ahead and stop the web server here. And, uh, and now we can do an app config. Oh, that's in the bin directory. Bin app cfg.sh run the update command and pass in the path again to your war directory. All right, we go ahead and hit enter and that's going to package it up and send it up and you will need to authenticate here. So I'm just going to authenticate with our account gcp at cbtnuggets.com password here. And there we go. Now it's going to start the process of uploading it into our GCP project there, GAE Nuggets. And that was a success. So now if we head to the browser and we head up there to cloud.google.com, we're already logged in under our GCP at cbtnuggets.com account. So we'll be able to go right to our console. And in our projects here, we'll choose our GAE Nuggets project. If we head down here to versions, we should be able to see that the version that we just deployed is right uh, there. There it is, Java 05-basics. If we click on this, we should get the live version of our site that we were just running locally. And there it is. Now let's try to log in. Let's hit that login button. What's going to happen here is I'm already logged in under our GCP at cbcnuggets.com account. So let's log out. And now let's log in and check it out. It's going to take us to the real Google login screen rather than the simulated local development web server version. So now I can log in and boom, we are in. And we're also an administrator here on our GCP project. So that's why we have admin credentials. So there you go. There is how you can fire up your local development web server through Eclipse, through the SDK, as well as deploy it through the SDK to the cloud and run it up there in Google App Engine. In this App Engine Basics demonstration nugget for Java, we saw how to get our project up and running. We got familiar with the Achieved It sample application that we're going to be building throughout the App Engine course. So we imported it into Eclipse. We got familiar with the structure. We got familiar with the purpose and walked through all the pages and saw all the different areas that we're going to be working with here throughout the course. And then I showed you how we could fire up the local development web server, both through Eclipse as well as through the SDK. And then we also deployed it through the SDK and saw it running up there in the cloud. I hope this has been informative for it. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.